What's up guys, this is Shared Talking, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'll be making a full review for the Romancing Festival Eastern Saga Bender that actually brings Noor to the front line and also a rapier version of Katarina and a support version of Gustave. This Noor is more about damage and farming than anything else. Katarina tries to rival uh, Polka as a very good healer, but she does not have the same defense capabilities. Gustav tries to rival Father Empress and Barbara as a very good support that also offers other stuff. Well, I'll start talking about Noel and he is a very strong damage dealer with 120% STR, 112 agility. We don't even need to look on his other status because he's not made for Remembrance. The best version of him that works there is his Christmas style that you can find here. If you did have it, it works super well. This new one should only be used if you have nothing else. Right, because the endurance and wheel do not look too bad, but he's not made for that, and I'll explain later. The first passive is called Brave Advance 2 STR. On well, not turns, he gets an STR buff of 15%, and also grants himself an attack boost that increases his damage by uh, 20% and lasts for 3 turns. Now, for passives, the first one is called Brave Advance 2 STR. On odd turns, that being 1, 3, 5, and beyond, He'll buff his own STR by 15% and he will also grant himself an attack boost that increases damage by 30%. This attack boost lasts for 3 turns, but since he's using it for farming, it will only increase his damage potential on turn 1 and then on turn 3. But if you are bringing him on raids, he's going to stack that on turn 3. His turn 3 damage will be the highest, but on farming, turn 2 is not going to be that great. Uh, and also on even turns he's going to grant himself a defense down so that he takes even more damage Hence why he's not very good for Remembrance The second one is called Eager to Win Attack damage increases by 15% at all times When his HP is not full it increases by another 10% and reduces damage taken by 10% This is not enough to survive on future content uh, It's just here because of the passive being that way Then on the start of a turn he gets a uh, TBP and also takes 10% recoil damage. That happens for 5 times in battle. This is made for farming so that you have access to more BP to use stronger attacks in different cycles. Then he also has fired up 7, increasing his damage potential by 40%. So what do you actually have here? 40 plus 15 plus 10, you have 65. And then 30% when you are on odd turns. That means he reaches as much as 95% on odd turns. And he even has his STR buff, that means that he's going to do plenty of damage on those turns. And besides that, we'll be getting these 3 points of BP. Uh, and since he also takes uh, recoil damage, he will always take benefit of the not full HP passive. As far as skills, the first one is called Autumn Slash. It's a 0 BP attack with deep power that before the character attacks, it buffs STR by 30%. So besides being free, the final output will be close to C power. So, very nice, but this actually doesn't really work so well with this Noro. Because, uh, depending on the cycles, you're not gonna use this anyway. The Christmas style benefits it much more, because this one can either use this when he does not have EP to use Air Dance Slash, or start using that, and then use Air Dance Slash when he gets close to 20 BP. The second skill is called Burst Blade. For 8 BP, you have a full AoE attack with Slash Damage, B Power, and 21 mod. But it does carry fast, so that can help because you can actually place in on a back row of a Magia fight formation and place someone in the front line with a higher power. So he's going to help the frontal units do enough damage to kill enemies. But Noel by himself is not going to do much. He can probably solo some very specific stages in story mode, but on events the damage is just not enough. But when combining with someone else, they can work. Uh, if you are using the Dragon Stance X formation, he can actually use this three times in a row, hence why I mentioned it as Story Mode. Now, the third skill is called Maple Storm. For the same APP cost, we have a single target attack that's even indirect, that's interesting. And he buffs himself for Morale up very large, increasing his damage potential by 40%. His lasts for two turns, and then he's going to attack with a Triple S attack that has 60 mod. The good thing is that because of the Morale up buff before the attack, you can consider this a 4S attack by only 8 PP cost. That's really impressive. It's only slash damage, but we could compare this to two other characters. For example, we have Vandalize plus 
from Silver that can be used in many of her different versions, especially with her uh, uh, Global Axe or UD Axe styles, as you can see here. She will have a follow-up attack. That's one of the strongest damage on turn one in the game because of the follow-up attack. Uh, Noah will get close. He's not going to beat Silver, but it's going to get pretty close, uh, but with only slash damage. There is also another character, Chiago Lisboa. Well, Chiago has this attack called Soul Stinger at a 9 BP cost. He also has the same passive to get 3 BP per turn, but loses 10% HP. He attacks the party as well. It's kind of uh, punishment for having access to a very strong attack. And in Chiago's case, it's Pierce and Shadow. It's a better combination. There's less competition on those two elements as well. But you can see that we are getting almost the same power with a lower cost. That's the only good thing actually about Noah, to be honest. Uh, his AoE attack is not a powerful. And if you are using the Dragoon Stance Axe Formation, he can use Maple Storm three times in a row. Can be used for raids, can be used for normal story farming, maybe in some events. So in the end, this Noah has a very similar design to characters like Soji, Chiago. Uh, he's just more limited. He only goes after Slash and Shadow Damage by Inheritance, so a pretty easy to skip character. Still, by raw power, I believe he deserves an SS Plus grade, that's the same as I gave for Chiago, like a tier 2 in our tier list. Now, as an extra info, there is a future version of Noel on JP, he's the only character of this list with a new style, and this time he becomes a tank with high endurance and will. He has an attack that self heals and buffs endurance and will. He has a cover stance. He can also heal everyone with an attack that's pretty similar to Steel Blade Light, but has a bigger cost and a bigger damage. He self heals BP when attacked. So that's kind of the character. He benefits from the skill number one when you want to just self buff, uh, but you will just be saving BP to use the third skill or use the other attack that applies cover. The next character is Katarina, and she's now using Ray Pierce, so it's a change between the main status. She was always using STR, now she prefers Dax or uh, She still has 105% STR to inherit sword skills, but I have to say that they don't make sense. There's only one skill and it's still debatable. Her endurance is bad, only 60%. It didn't make much sense since she has a shield against physical attacks, so uh, I expected a better endless. We have 81% will, that's more than enough, and her agility is 105, so she wants to attack with dexterity and wants to go before the enemy. Her love is pretty high with 71% because she's also a healer. Now for passes, the first one is called Abundance Switch. When attacking with Pierce attacks, she recovers 2 BP. That's amazing. Her normal attack or any of her 3 skills will trigger this effect. And when attacking with cold attacks, she recovers all surviving allies HP by around 220. And that is pretty cool, right? It needs to attack with cold attacks, and one of her attacks is not based on cold, so we have to talk more about that later. And then the second one is called Flash of Revelation 2. On the start of battle, she starts with 12 BP, and when landing a weak attack, she will self recover for the same 220 and then recover another BP. So. Well, when she's attacking with target, she's going to heal 6 BP per turn. And then she's going to self-heal uh, when using both Pierce and Cold twice as well. So she will be sustainable even through her endurance is not that great. Now, the third one is Intrinsic Ass's Word 4. When attacking with Ass's Words, damage increases by 20%. It's her only damage passive. As you can see, she's not made for damage. And when attacked by an attack that will cause resist, she will decrease damage by 40%. Well, again, to get resist, you need at least 35 resistance against a specific attribute. So it's easy to have one character in your party with that because you can just equip Proof of War Tower and then choose your other equipments accordingly. But when you have too many characters with the same type of pass, it's gonna get a little hard. Then 37% chance to evade an attack that will cause resist. Okay, so we have a character can get plenty of BP per turn, and that heals the party with her passive. Let's remember that. First skill is called Sonic Pierce. It's a fully UE attack with only 1 BP cost that has Pierce and Slash damage. With 6 mod, it's just like a normal attack, a little better because it will scale with rank ups. 
And at least when using this skill, you're going to recover 2 BP. And if the enemy is weak to either Slash and Pierce, you're going to recover another one. So you are spending 1 BP and getting 5 back or 4 back if the enemy is not weak. Um, then you will not trigger the fully we heal. Have to remember that. Now, the second attack is called Ice Impact. For 7 BP, you get a fully we attack that has Pierce in code that will trigger all effects from Abundance Switch. And this is a deep power attack and it hits between 1 to 2 times. 50% chance for 1 hit, 50% chance for 2 hits. With each hit, it will recover all surviving allies HP by very small effect. It's the same value as her passive effect that will heal around 220 in the current game. So uh, when using this skill, you will heal at least twice, sometimes three times. And uh, when you look on this, you'll be healing for around 440 or 660. And that is for many turns, almost every turn, if you are attacking a weak target, because she recovers as much as 6 BP and she's spending 7. That means she only actually lost 1 BP in that turn. And she starts the fight with 12 BP. It takes a lot of time for her to actually run out of BP if she's attacking weak targets. So making the calculations, she can use this attack 6 times in a row if you are hitting a weak target before she runs out of PP. If she's not attacking weak target, she can use at least 3 times before she runs out and she uses a normal attack or use Sonic Pierce and then returns to using Ice Impact. You can go and just use her Glacial's Word, that's a 2BP attack, but then I don't think that's good because you can just keep using the full heal from the Abundance Switch code trigger but in the end, you will only recover 1 BP. That will not allow you to go back into Ice Impact. It has a chance of giving you 3 heals alongside a passive. So, um, I think you are better off just using Ice Impact, normal attack when you don't have enough BP, and go back to Ice Impact. Uh, but one thing we need to consider, this Katarina is not as tanky as the newest version of Polka. And she will compete with him most of the time. Now I believe that this version of Polka isn't enough to heal in most situations. Well, he already has this 30% damage reduction and then he has 5 stacks on minus 10 and he has a better endurance. And he taunts to even save some damage from the party. But, uh, well, there may be some occasions where you want both. It may work. And for those that do not know, 5 very small healings equals to the same value as Steel Blade Phoenix heals. Maybe even a little more because Katarina has a higher love. So, let's say she uses her skill number 2 two times in a row in a boss fight. She will heal around the same as the newest version of Polka heal it with Steel Blade Phoenix. So, at least in this scenario, they are very comparable. And there is one good thing about this is just that, well, Matriarch with her pin of peace boosts the healing of both characters, right? But pin of peace will also boost dexterity. That will increase this Katarina's damage. That does not increase polka damage, for example. So um, all remembrance, she's going to make the rapier remembrance battles super easy because she will be the best healer and then she can actually resist easily if you equip her correctly and that's her main gameplay although it was not designed like this she was actually designed for her skill number three this one is a fully UE attack with 10 bp cost that will also do piercing code that means that she still heals at least with the passive and applies defensive stance skill large that decrease skill damage for three turns well that is something that happens with Gustave. The tank version, the Fated Howard comes, has a steel dominance. This is an ATP skill, and this one applies defense stance spell against spells. And it's for two turns in his case, but he can keep up because it's only ATP cost, he gets eight per turn. It's a fast skill. In her case, it's not fast. As you can see here, depends on her going first, that's why they buff her agility. 
uh, but it lasts for three turns and when using Ice Fog Sword Ballet, she will always recover at least five EP per turn. And that means that she still has uh, one turn where she can do whatever she wants, either on normal attack or just saved so that she can use Ice Impact in between. If she's attacking weak targets, she will be capable of using Ice Fog Sword Ballet, then a normal attack, and then Ice Impact, and then go back to Ice Fog Sword Ballet. That is something that will work. So you always have the defense stance up, and you still get some healings. You get at least one from this, normal attack will not trigger anything, but then when you use Ice Impact, you get at least two healings, maybe three. It's a very interesting setup for a character that was not that interesting before this change. She had this defense stance, but I have to say that we already have very defensive characters with Barbara, Final Impress, so Katarina is now another one. But I believe she's even a better healer than support for defense situations. And as a final note, this Katarina does not work for farming, she's pretty bad on that. And there's no other future version in JP. And because she's using Ray Pierce now, I don't know if they will release the next one using Ray Pierce as well. So she's what you see. She's good. Just don't know about her future. Uh, well, I already discussed her inheritance with Glacial Sword, that I don't really think it's that important. So this character is self sustained. You don't need any past version of Katarina, and she does not benefit from anything. So. That's what she is. She's going to take a triple S grade in the cheer list by being such a versatile character that can work in different situations. Next character is Gustav, and this time he's a tank. He has 112 endurance and wheel, then he has 116 STR as well for some okay damage. His dex rate is just good enough, but he has very low agility. But this is not a problem since his best skill is actually fast. The first pass is Offensive Union 3, when all allies are still surviving, increases damage by 15% for all of them. Then we have Conviction. On the end of a turn, he gets 1 BP and starts the fight with 12. That's the same one as Matriarch had in the past. Then High Protect Tension increases damage output by 20 and reduces damage taken by 30. So he has only 35 damage increase to himself, gives 15 to everyone else, and then reduces damage by 30. As first skills, we're going to start with the last one. Fighter Special uses 12 VP. It has double S power and 49 mod. It's a pretty weak attack, but it grants the user a guard up, very large, decreasing upcoming damage by 50%, lasts for 5 turns. Well, you think about this, it could be cool if this character could taunt uh, or had anything else to offer besides just buffing the damage passively. Well, it's just an attack that he can use when he is farming, I believe, and then or Overdrive, for example, but still it's a pretty weak attack. And then he can, after that, use Sunder. This is an attack that uses 3 BP, and it has a power, so pretty strong for the cost. It will save at least 1 BP every time he uses Sunder, so that he eventually, slowly build up to use Fire Special again, or some other type of inheritance. Well, this is not his main gameplay. His main gameplay is all about skill number 2, call it Let's Paint. For 8 BP, you have a support, Fast skill that first grants all surviving allies an attack boost that will increase damage by 20%. You have to mentally level this up, it starts on 15, goes up to 20. And then he applies also a defense boost that will decrease upcoming damage by 15%. Both buffs will last for 4 turns, starting from when he applies. It's nice because it will always apply before the enemy attacks on turn 1. And then he enters an energy charge stance. This energy charge stance will last for two turns. That means the same turn, the next turn, and then on turn three, you have available Osaki Pigeon Wisto. This skill here is very impressive. Now, I needed to get inside the game to show you the effects of Osaki Pigeon Wisto. Well, when you release this skill, it will be fast, that means it will go before everyone else. It will cast Morally up very large, that will increase damage by 40%, and then Guard up medium, decreasing damage received by 25%, and also give 2 BP to the whole party, including himself, and also buff all surviving allies' endurance by up to 25%. It will start on 15, you have to mentally level this up, together with the attack boost to get the full potential. Now that it matters too much, the endurance buff is the less important effect here. but 
Morale up very large. Increase the damage by 40% since you already increased it uh, with attack boost by 20. Means that you are getting a 60% damage increase. That actually matters. Especially if you are attacking with heavy nukers, increasing their damage a little further. Ward up medium, it's nice because it will stack with defense boost. And then you had 15%. Now you added another 25% stack. Okay, so this only lasts for two turns. But let's think a little about this. Well, you enter the fight and you apply defense boost, minus 15 on turn 1. Okay, then you enter the charge mechanic and by turn 3 you apply minus 25 with guard up. So you have two stacks, right? Uh, this guard up will only last up to the end of turn 4. But by turn 4 you will have three stacks. Why? Because you already applied another defense boost. You had minus 15, minus 15, and then minus 25. That is nice, right? Uh, but by turn 5, you only have one minus 15. Because you lost the ward up effect, you lost the first defense boost you had. So, uh, it has some very strange uptime. Some stuff will stack, you will have more protection in one turn than in another. Uh, but most of the time you have at least one guard up medium and one defense boost stack. And well, uh, now we have to go back in the website. Well, there are two characters that will compete with what this Gustav offers. And those are Empress. With her Global X style we have Screw Guard. Minus 20% at all times when everyone is alive and then she can apply the Christmas Moon. So you have minus 25. Two effects. There is also Barbara. Barbara is a character that has a minus 25 and then minus 25 again. She has a ward up medium and a defense boost. And she can keep this up all the time, just like in press after turn one. So these two characters are the biggest comparison. But there is one good thing about Gustave. But what's that? You can inherit this into his tank version. The tank version has a screw guard. So minus 20% at all times. And at least minus 15 from defense boost at all times as well. Sometimes you have screw guard plus one defense boost plus one guard up and plus another defense boost but sometimes you will only have one screw guard and one defense boost see how it's a little confusing but on the same time it just means that you'll be protected most of the time well you are not losing too much by switching to this version of Gustav if you have because well it's 105 endurance and wheel versus 112 this does not change much uh, so I would much prefer to use this let's paint skill with the tank version of Gustav, unless I can trade off the Strong Guard for the offensive union to increase damage a little further, because I already have enough support and I want to increase my damage a little further. But I do believe that's the main gameplay of Gustav that will rival Empress and Barber. Very good characters that are used for hard fights. And in Remembrance, we don't have that many support besides Empress. And then you can stack both to full potential, because Defense Boost always stacks, and Screw Guard also always stacks. So they will reduce damage by a lot. You can even leave your Final Empress healing, instead of just using the shield, in order to make your Remembrance easier. There is only one problem. Another character that is on the meta, it's Time. Uh, time has wired up as well so they will clash because guard up will not stack i know there is one turn that you will not have guard up active with your gustav you could use time for that but in this case maybe if you are bringing the chef polka from the current banner you may already have enough healing or maybe you are bringing katarina i don't know so time will not be that necessary if the fight does not need uh, some boss fights can be deal with if you are just using one wheel buffer from Matriarch P enough piece. Remember that many bosses we needed to bring two wheel buffers. So well now you can be a little more creative. You can even bring the new version of Liz because Liz does not clash. Liz has a walk or bash attack that buffs wheel 
Okay, we have a secondary source and she can even buff every turn faster than time. And when you have an OPP, you can even use this Karatsu Water Wall to apply another defense boost that decreases damage even further. And you can even time this out to use when bosses are using nukes. So you will have an extra layer of um, strategies, especially because this Gustav will give you two extra BP, allowing Liz to have more BP to use her shield, Polka to heal a little more often, and other characters use better skills. If you are using Katarina, she may not even run out of BP if you are using her against enemies weak to pierce or cold. As for inheritance options, I think that you will do a little more damage with Vertical Blade instead of the two Tasmai's Word version, but it's pretty marginal. And you could theoretically inherit the Triple Crush attack to use on Overdrive, but I don't think you should because you probably have a better nuker and you want to use Let's Paint to help the remaining characters in your party and give attack boost and morale up. That's his best gameplay. So you should not care about inheritance. What you should care is about his the Faded Hour Cons style so that you have a different version where you can bring Screw Guard instead of just bringing Offensive Union Tree. Well, in the end, this Gustav rivals Fire Impress and Barbara, two meta characters that are used in hard challenges. And I have to say that it's not like you really need this Gustav to replace those two styles if you are using them, but he does add another layer of strategy where you can switch some characters for the better and then add more utility. But, well, if you want to skip, it's still okay. The other characters will do their job and you'll still be able to clear content. But since he's a competitor of very meta units, he really deserves a triple S grade in our cheer list. Now back to the banner image, is this banner worth summoning for? Well, actually, yes. But first, are you a veteran? If you are, well, if you summon it for Greg Robin and Chef Polka, you already have the best healer in the game. It's not like you really need Katarina, but she's a very good secondary healer, has an additional effect to defend against skills, and will be very good for Remembrance moving forward. And, well, if you already have Final Impress and even Barbara, Gustav is yet another option, kind of a side grade, but will be better in some situations where you want faster damage. He may help you finish battles faster, and he adds BP, allowing some other characters to reach better cycles. No is a very skippable character for veterans because we already have a lot of slash damage, but it's not like he is not going to be used if you have him. So veterans can wait, but if they decide to pull, it's actually a worth banner. And I'll be giving a silver plus award for those that have the tank version of Gustav so you have the full potential of the styles. But for newcomers, I don't recommend pulling here because you get much more value summoning on the festival rerun banner where you have 10% drop rates for the units. Here we have 3% on total and chances of off banners. And there you have a 33,000 gen cost for a PT. Here is 45,000. So you will have to spend more to maybe get less. These characters are very nice, but they don't just replace the characters we've been using. They add something extra or alternative, but are still side grades. Well, that's my opinion. What is yours? Please say here in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you haven't. If you want to support the channel, we have a PayPal button, so we survive with the help of the community. Hope to see you soon in the next video. Bye.